Yeah, so uh, welcome to the next presentation uh, about MemoBase 2020 um, and how we use Fedora as the central repository to store linked data and digital objects in it. Um, my name is Thomas Bernhardt. I work at Doku Team, which is a Swiss um, service provider um, for services uh, of the whole like um, lifetime of, of digital or of information. We do uh, information management, mostly consulting there. We do uh, offer services in the, in the area of uh, um, archiving and also we provide digital archives to customers either as on-premise installation or as a, as a cloud service. And these installations use Fedora at their core to as a repository to store digital data. And um, in this context, uh, we use Fedora slightly differently. We are also still using Fedora 3. Um, and we're also part of the Fedora 6 pilot to be able to migrate to Fedora 6 uh, as soon as possible, actually. Um, oh. Oh, sorry. So um, what is MemoBase? MemoBase is an online portal um, to uh, collection of audiovisual um, heritage of Switzerland. It's, um, it's not a digital archive on its own, but it aggregates data from different institutions, Swiss institutions that actually hold these uh, audiovisual uh, files and provides like one interface to access those and to research and what we see here is the current uh, online portal of MemoBase. And last year, uh, the project started, or actually at the beginning of 2020, the project started to replace the current implementation with a completely new architecture uh, that focuses on uh, linked data and uh, therefore gets more flexible regarding what kind of documents can be presented, how can, can they be presented, and also what, um, what endpoints you get to actually research for documents within, within the portal. Um, um, I'll go into a bit more detail regarding the architecture in one or two slides then. Um, the institution behind MemoBase is uh, Memoria. It's uh, an association for the preservation of the audiovisual heritage of Switzerland. Besides MemoBase, they also provide like consulting services um, to um, on how to archive um, audiovisual uh, documents, be they digital or be they uh, on some kind of uh, older technology. Um, for uh, MemoBase 2020, for this new project, there are actually three uh, companies or institutions involved. Um, uh, the University Library of Basel is actually the main contractor um, which provides then a lot of the like base architecture, all the infrastructure is hosted on in their uh, data centers. And is it actually okay? There is some kind of uh, build construction work going on here. Do you hear that or is it fine to follow? No, we can hear you perfectly fine. All right, oh, good. Then it's just, uh, then just I hear it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, uh, the University of Basel that provide the base uh, infrastructure and also uh, implement a lot of like the data processing uh, parts of the infrastructure, which we'll see in a bit. Um, then there is a German company called Outer Media, 
they're uh, focusing mainly on uh, providing presentation layers for uh, digital collections. It's really worth uh, taking a look at their website because they have a lot of examples, really beautiful examples on how you could present and give access to digital collections. Um, they use uh, Drupal as their like base, base technology and use a set of custom Drupal modules to then implement like faceted search and uh, um, different kinds of detail view and so on. And last but not least, the uh, Doku team, um, as I already said, we're, uh, our, our expertise is in, in archiving and in building digital archives and also in using uh, Fedora as part of the, these digital archives. And our, um, our task is mainly um, setting up uh, Fedora a Fedora 5 instance currently and helping and integrating this Fedora 5 instance with the rest of the architecture. Um, so we want to transition from an XML based uh, data model to a uh, um, linked data or RDF based data model and this is just a brief uh, overview of the data model that we are going to be using. As you might see, we also focus on uh, records in context ontology based uh, data model. Um, as I just learned, we're not going to be the first that use that in production, but we're still, uh, I guess, one of the first. Um, and the parts you see here in, in blue are then actually the entities that become, uh, will become RDF resources in Fedora as well. All the other um, parts you see here are either anom anonymous nodes in Fedora then or are just uh, text properties sometimes. And so we have like uh, an institution. This is the institution that um, that holds the collection. We then have the record set, which is the collection that's uh, going to be uh, published in MemoBase. And then for each document, there is a, a record entity. And as we can have different, um, yeah, like different instantiations of this record, uh, for example, uh, a physical representation that is somewhere in an arc stored somewhere in an archive, but also a digital one, and also maybe uh, some, uh, some preview format. Uh, we have uh, the instantiation entity to um, describe these different uh, presentations. Um, yeah, I already said that I put this here on what we use mainly, which ontologies are used in the data model and how they're mapped to, um, to Fedora. What I missed is uh, what becomes binary resources in Fedora. Uh, mostly it's going to be dig born digital originals or some kind of usage copy of, uh, of a document. And we're not sure if we're going to be storing thumbnails in Fedora or if we're going to be using a different service for that. So I want to give you a brief overview over the architecture that we use. Um, and uh, mainly like the data flow process goes here from left to right, basically. Um, we have uh, an SFTP server as a point where um, users or institutions can upload uh, data, which is then going to be transformed in an import data pipeline 
and in the end stored in a Fedora 5 instance. Um, communication within this import data pipeline mainly goes through a Kafka cluster uh, through messages and you can like monitor the process through a Drupal based admin UI where you see okay which parts are uh, have been processed already has there been an error and where you can also like create new a new institution or create a new record set to then actually start importing data um, and after the well after data uh, is stored in Fedora there is a post processing processing pipeline that mainly um, takes the resources in Fedora and populates some kind of uh, uh, index with it, um, stores usage copies uh, prepared for the front end in, in a media server, prepares, uh, uh, stores them in a IIIF server or prepares a IIIF manifest to store in the IIIF money, uh, server and so on, which are then used by the front end UI. So um, the main part on how we integrate Fedora, we have uh, down here Fedora and we have basically three kind of small services that interact with Fedora. On the import process pipeline, we have in the end of this pipeline, we have a Fedora ingest service, which uses a small client library that we de developed in as part of this project uh, that talks to the Fedora REST API and looks at all data stored in Fedora, which then um, emits uh, ActiveMQ messages as activity streams, which are processed again by a Fedora event handler, which mainly does some kind of uh, um, filtering events. There are events that we don't really need, but Fedora still creates them. And uh, we make sure here that these events are not uh, like treated further. And then we have a Fedora metadata extractor that again takes these messages, calls the Fedora API to like get metadata for specific, specific uh, services that is needed like technical metadata regarding uh, what resolution is the image or um, more descriptive metadata on what title has this uh, resource and what's the record set that, co that contains this resource and so on. And by inter during integrating these services, we mainly had three challenges so far, I say. Um, the first one is we had to decide on how we are gonna map these external URIs that should also be then visible in a Sparkle endpoint later on and are visible in the UI to the, UR, to the URL that the internal Fedora instance is published under. Um, you see the part back here stays the same but all this front part uh, is different. And we decided to do that in a, within this Fedora client library. So we have like one library that maps from the external uh, ID to an internal ID and then calls Fedora, gets you the RDF, transforms all the references in it and gives gives it back here in the Fedora metadata extractor or in some other service using that library. Then we had uh, some problems because our data model in our data model records have a reference to the instantiation and the instantiations have a reference to the record set. And I don't know who also had this problem, but if you try to create a resource that references another resource in Fedora that doesn't yet exist, um, you get an error. Um, the solution we took here is that we added a separate 
call into that library that lets you create like an empty placeholder. So you can first create placeholders for all your RDF resources that are referenced, and then you can create each record or ingest each record as a whole and don't have to like parse special uh, special uh, RDF uh, properties or links to other resources and ingest them later on. And one problem we haven't solved completely is uh, we're still not quite sure when to use um, the LDP basic container, LDP direct container or LDP indirect container. Um, mainly because uh, we didn't have time to really uh, go into details what's the difference, but maybe someone else has already a, a recommendation on how to use them. That's it from my part. Um, you can reach me on Twitter um, through at TomCVE and you can reach docu team at twitter as well uh, at docu team ch thank you very much and i'm now open for questions yes thank you um as thomas said now is the time for questions we still have a few more minutes uh, before the next presentation so um if you have any questions just unmute yourselves or post in the chat or raise a hand whatever